This is Anita. Like many Canadians, Anita buys a lot of widgets. For the past few years, widget-making companies illegally fix the prices of their products. As a result, Anita and thousands of others paid too much. Anita wants her money back. Last week, Anita read that a class action had been started against the widget-making companies. Anita wants to know, what is a class action? Is she going to get any of her money back? A class action is a procedure that allows a group of people who have the same legal problem to get together and sue at the same time. This group of people is called the class. A class must include at least two people, but there is no limit to how many people can be in a class. The class is represented by one or more individuals who volunteer to be a representative plaintiff. A representative plaintiff is the person who is named as the plaintiff in the lawsuit. The lawyer who represents the class is called class counsel. The representative plaintiff advises class counsel and must fairly and adequately represent the interests of the class throughout the case. One of the first steps after filing a class action lawsuit is to have it approved by the court. This process is called certification. The lawyers go to court to argue whether the lawsuit should be allowed to proceed as a class action. At certification, the judge is not deciding who wins or loses the case. The judge is only deciding whether the case should go ahead as a class action. If the case is certified, the class action goes ahead. If the case is not certified, Anita and the other widget buyers cannot sue as a group. The court will order that an official notice of certification be published or sent to class members. Anita goes to the class action website and sees that a court has certified the class action and has defined the class as every resident of Canada who bought a widget between January 1, 2015 and June 30, 2019. Because Anita bought widgets during that time period, she is automatically a member of the class. Anita has no obligation to pay legal fees. If the case settles or is successful at trial, legal expenses are usually paid from the amounts recovered for the class. Any such payment must be first approved by the court. As a class member, Anita does not have to attend court or actively participate in the case, but she still has rights. Anita has the right to be given information and official notices about the class action, not to be a part of the class action, and to object if she disagrees with a proposed settlement. There are two official notices generally provided in class actions. These notices are distributed to class members in various ways, through newspaper, radio, and internet ads, or in other ways, like direct letter mail. These notices are almost always posted on the Class Actions website. The first notice is a notice of certification, which includes information like the opt-out date, the definition of the class, and the contact information of class counsel. The second notice is sent when a settlement is reached. Many class actions end in a settlement. A settlement can happen at any point in the life cycle of the case, but not all class actions settle. If Anita does not want to be part of the class action, she must opt out. If she wants to be in the class action, she does not need to do anything. If Anita wants to opt out of the lawsuit, she must do it before the deadline that is listed in the official court notice. Anita can opt out in two ways. 1. Usually there is an opt-out form available on the website set up for the class action to be filled out and sent to class counsel. Or 2. She can send a letter to class counsel stating that she wishes to opt out. The letter should include her name, address, telephone number, and signature. By opting out, Anita would be removing herself from the results of the class action. If the class action is successful, Anita cannot receive any money or benefits awarded to the class members. By opting out, she could still sue the defendant on her own. If Anita does not opt out and stays in the action, she has a right to information about the class action. Updates on the status of a class action and the lawyer's contact information can usually be found on class counsel's website. 
If a settlement agreement is reached between the parties, a judge must look at it and decide whether it is in the best interests of the class. The judge issues a notice to class members to let them know a settlement has been proposed. A notice of proposed settlement includes information about the settlement, the date and location of the court hearing to approve the settlement, and fees for class counsel. The notice will also include the procedure, date, and time for objecting to a settlement. If Anita does not think a proposed settlement is fair, she has the right to object to it. She can object in writing or by appearing at the settlement approval hearing. Specific instructions on how to object to a settlement are provided in the Notice of Proposed Settlement. At the settlement approval hearing, the lawyers explain why the proposed settlement is a good deal. A judge can either approve or reject a proposed settlement. But even if a class member objects at the settlement hearing, the judge can still approve a settlement if they conclude the settlement is still in the best interests of the class. Most settlements are approved. A class member does not have the right to appeal the judge's decision to approve the settlement. If a judge approves the settlement, Anita is not automatically guaranteed money. She may need to take additional steps, such as filing a claim or sending in proof of purchase or proof of damages. This is called the claims process, and settlements often go through a claims administrator who will facilitate the settlement. For example, if Anita does not provide correct documentation, the claims administrator may deny her application for compensation. If Anita submits a claim which is denied by the claims administrator, she may have the right to appeal that decision. But every settlement is different. Whether Anita has the right to appeal the claims administrator's decision depends on the terms of the settlement agreement. If you think you're a class member, like Anita, you can get more information about your case and your rights on the Class Action website by asking Class Counsel or by contacting the Class Action Clinic. The creation of this video was generously funded by the Law Foundation of Ontario and proudly produced by Hello Adventure. To learn more about class actions, visit our website www.classactionclinic.com.